Sumatra, Jordan. At the summit of Jabul Harun, a small white dome marks the tomb of Aaron, the brother of Moses. According to the Hebrew Bible, Aaron was chosen by God to be the first high priest of the Israelites, a title that came with enormous responsibility. Aaron, Moses' brother, served as priest of the people. And then following Aaron, the line of the priests followed his genealogy. They were the ones designated to carry the ark, and they were the ones permitted to come close to it in worship. The attire of the priests was beautiful, but it was also there for their protection. They had to wear a mitre, they wore a breastplate, they had to wear a long robe, they had to keep certain areas of the body protected, the head, the lungs, the heart, the genital area. The high priest would have to have these on to approach the ark. And when he approached the ark, he had to have a rope tied around his leg. Why? So if and when thing ever went wrong and the ark struck him or he died, no one would be allowed to go in to retrieve his body because they would suffer the same fate. On top of the ark were the figures of two angels. And it was said in the Bible that God's presence came to rest in the tiny space between them. That was the place where heaven and earth touched. The space between the angels on the lid of the ark was known as the mercy seat, upon which the image of God would allegedly sit when communicating with a Levite priest. But did the Israelites really witness an otherworldly presence between the two angels? And if so, was it literally the image of God or something else? Based on the numerous accounts of the Ark's awesome power, some ancient astronaut theorists have proposed that it may have been an electrical capacitor, a device used for storing and transmitting energy. Some of the stories that have come out of history about the Ark of the Covenant, that it erupted in sparks and flames and people would touch it and die instantly, or that it leveled cities, and many people have theorized that this is some type of actual large energy capacitor. Capacitor is exactly the right word to use. It relies on static electricity. It's the simplest device. You just need two conductors with an insulator between them. You've got the outer gold, a very nice conductor. And then if you open this up and look to the inside, that's an electrode. So what that's going to look like, okay, you have the outer side of your arc. That's going to say charge positive. Then you have your inner wall of the arc coated in gold. And then you have an insulator in between. That's just the wood you make the arc out of. Now what you got to do is get negative charges here on the inner side. And the question is, how do I get my positive and negative charges onto my arc? This is where the cherubs come in. You have one sitting on top here. That's attached to the outer side. And you can put charge on it and get your positive charge. The other cherub is going to be sitting here. It won't be connected to the outer layer, but it'll come in from a rod and connect to the inner side. And this is where we'll put our negative charge. So what that looks like over here at the arc is this cherub will not actually be attached to the outer conductor. There'll be an insulator there, and then it can have a rod that goes through and attaches to the inner conductor. Now, the Israelites claim to have actually been able to see the presence of God between the two cherubs, a representation of God. Now, if they weren't actually seeing a representation of God, could this arc of energy have been some type of other energy device that they were seeing? So when we're thinking about the Israelites seeing the image of God between the two cherub wings, one of the things to keep in mind, I think, is how the image of God was often described. We have smoke, fire. It's very rarely an actual, like, visual picture of a person. And so if you picture what arcs of electricity will be doing, there'll probably be a little bit of smoke. Um, there will be the really bright light. There'll be a crackling noise. That could certainly be something that would be interpreted as an image of God.